this is entitled Most Parents. Most parents are hypocrites. Now I am not trying to offend. I openly admit in most instances, parents are legit. But in everything we do, you act as if mistakes are new, as if you've never been in our shoes. I'm big, you're small, I'm right, you're wrong, and there is nothing you can do. You make our decisions sound irrational and practical, but I'm pretty sure there was a time that you had the exact same fuck. You forget you were exactly like me. You got it. <laughs> you share crazy childhood memories how you and your crew ran the street smoking on green but when it's time for your child to experience for themselves was my life not a good enough example for you and why do I get in trouble for taking up for myself when I feel I'm the battlefield of I am the adult instead of finding how we're actions so baffling how about you take a trip that memory lane <sighs> I'm really nervous, guys. Oh my god. Take your time. I don't know where to start. All right. Okay. Sometimes we lose sight of what's taught, but it's always instilled in us, immune to us, like the words Granny said months before lying in her deathbed, you're gonna be a star. So I recite those words every single day because I know this phase will not dictate who I become. Life ain't no walk in the park, now let me take that back because nowadays a walk in the park turns into a murder, t a murder scene. A young teen dropping to his knees, begging to God, please don't let me be the victim. And we, had, we haven't seen life yet. I had four friends die less than two years. So you could keep on saying all about the poor choices we make. Oh, how would it be doing is such a mistake. You forget you are exactly like me, but start, sh start remembering those childish days because one day... Yes, you could be standing over a grave. <laughs> most parents are hypocrites. Now I'm not trying to offend. I openly admit, in most instances, parents are legit. Give certificate to a source of knowledge. Yay! No, you know that? I heard that. 45. 45? Here you go. Okay. So our next performer, she's coming back up here to spit more fire. Ashley, come on up. Um, so I wrote this a uh, couple of years ago before um, my youngest niece was born, so yeah. Right. It's called Gone Before You Get Here. This is an elegy for pigtails and clip-on ties, for talking back to your moms, for swinging too high, for sleeping with all of your lights on, for being afraid of the dark, for being afraid to be dark. This is an elegy for black skin. 
This elegy isn't really for Michael Brown or Trayvon Martin or Anisha McBride. This elegy is for Aria, due March 17th, for Zoe and Pre-K, for Marcus entering middle school, for Izzy, who should graduate in June because they have to live every day wondering. We say, if you can just survive, it'll be great. Get you out of the hood and into scholastic institutions with white hoods built into their structures. Get you into the suburbs, into bone straight weaves, into pastels and boat shoes. If only we could get you out of your skin, then you'd be safe. I stand over cradle and ache for every accomplishment that finds itself in a grave before a stage for building blocks, though it for mausoleums instead of forts, but vases that instead of field picked Mother's Day daisies will hold ash because it seems like every day one of our own falls down and they still cannot see that our skin is drop dead gorgeous. They look at midnight and see shadows instead of stars. People treat our kids like target practice, transforming our streets into shooting ranges, standing their ground so they can sleep soundly while our children's beds lay empty. This is an elegy for all the little black boys and little black girls who either are afraid or should be. Okay, so we have two more performers. Um, our next performer is coming up again, Bati. Come on. All right, give him a hand. Peace, y'all. Peace to the gods and earth, is, the gods and earth, and the gods and earth in the building. Any Nubians that's, you know, Nation of Islam or, you know, Panther, whatever, peace to y'all. Uh, this is a poem that I wrote, and this is not a revolutionary poem, it's a spool poem, it's called My Nubian Queen. And one day I hope I get that Nubian Queen and say this to her, so here we go. Her hair is like that, the darkest of night. Her eyes are deep ebony brown, yet her smile is like none other I've seen thus far. She's my Nubian Queen. The lips she possesses, the rose petals. Her touch is of heaven descent. Her beauty is rare, is natural. A black woman, also my queen. Though, though, no, though no one is truly perfect, and my eyes can do no wrong, my Nubian queen everlasting. For me, it can be only her to comfort me in my time of mourn, to help lift me if I should fall, to believe there's hope when all else fails. She's merely being herself, also my new being queen. A strong black woman is indeed, with also passionate and understanding as well. For this woman would never leave my side. For love is never a question within my mind, my lady, my queen for all times. Black power. For the night is Trinity. She's gonna come up here one last time, so come on up. Hello again. Is she about to go in, y'all? Sorry, you gotta see me again. This is just one I kind of wanted to get off my chest. It's very different than the last one. Um, backstory, I wrote this one on the six month anniversary of the suicide of my friend. I can no longer remember the sound of your voice or your laugh. I can barely even remember what your smile looks like. It's like, I move forward a mile, a whole mile, and then I'm back again, lacking that self-control, just to be able to scroll through all those pictures of that beautiful smile. It's these moments that I find it hard to think. Every time I blink, I can see your face, but it's missing that beautiful smile. 
and I can't even piece a laugh to that smile. It's been six months, six months with you gone from my life. Six months without that smile that lit up my life. Once again, I'm set back that entire, long, tiresome, grueling mile. I really don't know how I'm doing this without that smile. Just about everyone's different with you gone, including myself. But at least you're at peace. I pray that you got the peace that you craved and wanted so bad that you took your own life. So I pray and I beg that you please be at peace. Thank you. Give it up for Trinity one more time. Yeah. All right, so we've come to the end of the sign-up sheet. Any last-minute performers before we... Any last-minute? Huh? All right, any last-minute performers before we... Uh, we about to get into the announcements and then close. Now nah, y'all shy? Aaron, Aaron, you ain't going? Let's go, Aaron! All right. Anybody want to come up, rep their hood? Any shout outs? Any announcements? Shout out to Source of Knowledge. Yeah. Shout out to Source of Knowledge for allowing us to use this space. Shout out. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to so everybody who made this possible. Shout out to North AXO, the NAACP. Yeah. Uh, let's give it up for everybody who performed tonight. Oh, by the way, um, this is going to be on DVD, so I encourage you to come back to this bookstore and get the DVD for a small fee, or you can come back to the bookstore and you know, buy one of the awesome books they got downstairs. Yeah. They got a whole lot of stuff downstairs that's awesome. So uh, yeah, support black businesses. Yeah. All right, my brothers and I, we got an announcement. Um, good evening, everybody. Um, hey, well, if you don't know, my name is Prince Okafor. This is my brother, Madrid Banner Smith, and my brother, Christopher Banfield. And um, I'm just here to announce that we started a small business called Success or Death. Um, Success or Death was pretty much started by us three collectively when we met in Orange, New Jersey. And I'm not gonna lie to you, we, just, we were just three kids in the hood doing stuff we probably shouldn't have done, seeing things we probably shouldn't have seen at such a young age, around the age of like 12, 13, and we just told each other, like, we gotta make it out by any means necessary. Like, we, we have friends who are drug dealers, we have friends who are killers, we seen where that happened. Most people that we grew up with are dead or in jail, or they're not doing nothing with their life. So we, so we all made a promise that we gonna do something positive we're gonna make it out and we're, we're gonna come back and give back. So people coming up don't have to experience what we experience. So that pretty much embraces success or death. It's a mindset, it's a way of life, it's a lifestyle. There's no other option but to succeed yeah. or die trying. Yeah. So that's pretty much the origin of success or death. And you wanna look us up, you can look, look us up on Facebook called Success or Death Apparel. So thank you for listening. All right, anyone else have any um, announcements? Anything that might be coming up that you want to shout out so that everybody knows about it? Y'all good? Oh, Mr. Davis. All right. 
And then also like once we close out we can all y'all like y'all can chill. Nobody getting kicked out. We can chill and talk. Mingle. You know, find you another bay. It's, it's getting cold out now. Is it getting cold out now? Wait, say now. All right, good evening, everybody. Uh, Abara Gadi. Mujama. 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 Cooperative Economics. Uh, I couldn't help but to Google the order of the candle lighting. Uh, it's the black candle for Umoja on day one. And then we go red to Kujichakulia, and then green to Ujima, and then back to red for Ujama. So today is Ujama, so we light or lit the red candle. And then tomorrow is Nia. Nia. Thank you, Nia. Which is back to the green candle. And then on on Thursday, December 31st, we are back to what? Red. Kuamba. Creativity. And then lastly, back to green for Imani. Is she in the house? We have it. All right, so that's that's the order of things that we, as, as this is part of our education. I just want to thank the amazing young people who uh, for the past 25 years, Deborah and I have been inspired to just be in your presence uh, because you you amaze us. You, you remind us of why we do what we do for the love of the people. Uh, so we are, are very grateful for that. Just by way of announcement, um, I just, as I shop here, I noticed that one of their announcements is the Spring and Praise of King, where keynote speaker is Harry Belafonte. It's free. Oh, wow. And it is uh, Thursday, January 14th. It's free. Uh, you just uh, call Symphony Hall box office, and you can get up to four tickets per person. Oh, wow. Free. Uh, Thursday, January 14th. Uh, doors open at 5 p.m. Program is from 6 to 8. And it's free. Um, and you can get up to four tickets. So you can bring a family to this experience right downtown. And it's free. Yeah. All right, so that's that. Uh, is there a list of performers that you still have? Because, because I would like for every performer who didn't win a door prize to have the chance to buy a book in this bookstore. So do we have a list? It's somewhere around. It's somewhere around. Yeah. So if you perform tonight and you didn't win a door prize, um, Let's make it so that you can buy a book right here tonight. Yes. All right? Um, I like that. I do. Well, we'll be like, we'll be like discounted. Right. Right. See me. All right, thank you, sir. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh -huh. All right, any other announcements? Yes. The NFL 50 um, Big Wood and Oranges. Yes, mommy. All right, Miss, <laughs> Miss Wanda Rodriguez is going to take the mic. She, uh, she's a friend and not a real friend in the sense that she coaches and judges Axel and is an Axel parent mm -hmm. of a gold medal winner, Anissa Rodriguez. So we're very proud to have her. And on behalf of the NAACP of Make Wood and Oranges, I just wanted to give a few announcements about, you know, so Black History Month, African American History Month is approaching us, February, and um, it's a short month, unfortunately, but we have a lot that we want to offer for that month for the NAACP of the Maplewood and Oranges chapter. So on February 6th, we're going to have a showing of the film on Henrietta Lacks. Not sure anybody knows about Henrietta Lacks. Can you raise your hand if you know anything about Henrietta Lacks? Henrietta Lacks was actually an African-American woman um, who her cancerous cervical cells, when she was dying of cancer, was harvested from her bodies by scientists and was exploited ever since then to this day. Lack cells are used every day, and she has no recognition for it. And back in those time, in that time period in the early 1950s, uh, they, they did a lot of things like that too. African Americans, people of minorities, like they did the Tuskegee experiment. You've heard of the Tuskegee experiment, yes. and things yeah. like that. So come on out on February 6th. We're going to be at the um, 
the uh, East, East Orange Public Library. That's right, East Orange, Orange, East Orange Public Library um, from 10 to 12. And I was sending out information via um, email to um, Mr. Davis, as well as on February 13th, we're gonna be at the South Orange Library. And on February 27th, we're gonna be at the Orange Library from one to three. And I'll have the information sent out and hopefully posted on Facebook and everything because we need to come out and know more about our history and know what's going on. We're also gonna have a panel discussion afterwards with various scientific, um, research scientists, African-American research scientists, they do exist, I'm one of them. And we're gonna make sure to come out and talk about what's going on these days in research and also where our community is leading when it comes to research and what's going on with us. What date is that one? Um, that's gonna be February 27th. February 13th and February 6th at various different libraries oh, in the Orange. Panel is going to take the panel is going to be at, right after the discussion. After this film, we're going to have the panel discussion. You can ask questions and we can get involved on all three uh, uh, showings. Thank you. Are there any other announcements? Yes. Hey, okay, so um, Ms. Gregory just informed me that on February 27th at the Newark Public Library, the Newark NAACP is having a Black Lives Matter panel discussion. Uh, so if anybody's interested in going or wants more information, just go see Ms. Gregory. What time? Uh, what's the time, Ms. Gregory? Uh, one to three. Oh. One to three. Uh, we'll send it out. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yes. Why are you standing up? Why are you standing up? We're so very glad to have this event because our alum are in the house and as soon as next weekend they will have, some of them will have gone back. I know Madrid will have gone back to North Carolina Chapel Hill. Yeah. And then there are at least a few others who will have gone back. So we're so very glad to have have you in the house. It's it's like a celebration. So yeah. Charger. Huh? Charger. Our part of the season where we prepare you for to be excellent begins in the new year. Um, every Sunday in the new year. Oh, wait, uh, with the exception of the first uh, Sunday, which is this Sunday coming up. We're not going to meet this Sunday, January 3rd. Uh, but the following Sunday, January 10th, is our first meeting, Axel Newark, in the new year, where we're going to meet at uh, Rutgers Newark Robeson Center at 2 o'clock. And all that information is going to go out to you. But I want to remind you, because those of you who have been with us know that Sundays we get in the mode of preparing after church and worship. Uh, in the mode of preparing at Rutgers Student Center, but it won't be this Sunday. So not this Sunday, but Sunday the 10th is when we begin. And then it's important that you make that meeting because we're planning for January 17th, the following Saturday. Saturday. Actually, I think that's the 16th. The 16th, uh, we're, pre we're preparing to take the students to Rowan University. <gasps> I go to college there. So it's a good place for the students, right? Absolutely. Yes. And you're, you're an undergrad there now? Yes, freshman. Awesome. You want to say a word about that? Rowan? Rowan? Yes. Come on, say a word. Do I want to? Yeah, we want that in. Tell us about Rowan. What's your name about? No, it's not a town. Thank you. Tell us about Rowan. Well, my name is Saida Winker. I'm a freshman at Rowan. Rowan, right? Yes. Yeah, I'm a freshman at Rowan <laughs> University. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a freshman at Rowan University. And it is fantastic. Um, I actually did well in my first semester. I met a, um, I got the Rowan University through a pre-college institute program. And that's that's ran okay. And that's ran through EOF program. So um I got to meet a couple of people there. I got to meet um, some people that uh, had the skin, same skin color as I did. And usually, there are a lot of people at Rome University who are, like most of the college is white. So me going there really made myself feel good and showed me like how powerful I am as an academic student. And I felt really good going to that college. And as well as meeting the people from PCI, I actually feel really great about that too because 
we all made it to a better place. We got out of Newark and then we made our uh, way to Rome University. And we just, Free College Institute, yes. <laughs> we all made it to Rome University and we're just, eventually we will be successful people in the future. Thank you very much for that. And just know that it's possible to get out of Newark, have an experience, and come back and reinvest. So there are plenty of us in this room who hail from Newark, were able to have experiences outside of Newark, but then made it our business to come back and join some wonderful young people and not so young people in this experience. So, uh, yes. Come. Hi. Hi. Um, you guys probably don't know me. Um, I'm Triana, and um, so I wanted to tell you guys about this show. Um, it's a new uh, theater company called Vanguard Theater Company, and it just started in um, Orange, the Oranges. And it's run by my singing teacher, and it's basically like promoting like diversity. And we did this run of uh, a biopic of the portrait of Ray Charles, and I play in it, and I'm a Raylette. They're doing another run of it uh, the 17th and 18th of January, and there's a whole uh, reception afterwards, food and everything. So I was just going to inform you guys about that. It's in South Orange at their middle school, and um, yeah. How much? <laughs> I, I, I don't know, actually, um, but I can, I can email. Yeah, you can yeah. email us. No, it's two dates? Yeah, two dates. 17 and 18. 17 and 18. Uh, seven, yeah, seven. Six, six, I'm sorry. Yeah, 16th and um, 17th, sorry. Um, it's um, 7 and the next show is at 3. Wait, 7 a.m.? 7 p.m.? Yeah, p.m. 7 p.m. on Saturday. And 3 p.m. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I'm just coming back to, because I'm in college, but I'm coming back to do this run. And it'll be really cool if you guys came out. So. All right. Thanks for sharing. All right. Hi! Yeah. That sounded good. Yeah. That sounded great, Yes. Yes, that is. Just a couple of minutes. Just to wet our appetite. Um, Eat the road, Jack. No. Um, no. Um, but you guys can come to the show. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we need some inspiration. You guys will see the sizzle. The sizzle will be there. <laughs> um, I can do. Um, uh, yeah, that's good. <laughs> uh, Woo! Yeah. Yeah. Well, most of it is... I'm, uh, <laughs> Take the time. Take the time. Take the time. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm trying to think because most of it, it it's sung by Ray. Um, he's incredibly talented, actually. He's on Broadway right now. He's in The Color Purple, and he's doing this run. But I'm trying to find something that's not on song. Okay. Um, the backup. The Ray for the backup. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So that's why it's backup, hard. Girl. So we just do the backup. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um... I'll, I'll, do you guys know Crying Time by Ray? And no? Yeah. Yeah, Crying Time. Okay. <laughs> wow. You got it. You got it. She's got it. <laughs>
information on like future events everything that people told you about I have a list serve right here so just come to Mr. Davis and like put your email your phone number and we'll be in contact with you um, so yeah just y'all can chill talk find your bang right. find some new friends I don't know. follow me on Instagram Andrea KDS but yeah you right. said no. Everybody get chosen. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I didn't even 